Okay, let's get started. Um, jigsaw puzzles today. This is a fun one. Okay, so I not taking any credit for the creativity because I just put them in little squares, but we have jigsaw puzzle pieces. Actually, let me show you the finished game first. And then we'll look at and we'll build the tutorial. Once you know how to build one puzzle, however, you can build any puzzles you want with any pictures you want. So this is what I was talking about. The picture itself is not so creative. It's a little iPhone guy. But let me show you how it works. And there's no game logic, which means um, you never know when it's done. But you could have possibly put that in there, actually. If you want the pieces, you have to download the solution, yeah. <clears throat> so the pieces move around. This guy here doesn't move, though. So it's all about the touch control. If you had a... I'm using a mouse right now, but if you had a finger on the phone, you can move the pieces around. And uh, just like the game, the jigsaw puzzle, you uh, move the pieces around and you build the puzzle. Oh, how did I do that so badly? Well, oh, let's see. I didn't cut mine into good pieces. So my pieces are a little funky, but actually that looks pretty close-ish, so it probably would, so, but my pieces are a little off, but let me show you how I made the pieces, and let me show you how we made the puzzle, so if you want the, uh, if you want these puzzle pieces, you'll have to download the solution project, and in the solution project, in the, uh, it's called touch control, you'll see the pieces. I labeled them 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B. And then I kept the big picture. Let me show you how I made these little pieces, actually. <coughs> if you are on a MacBook, which you are if you're doing iOS, if you double click on the PNG file, it brings it up in preview. This is actually what I did, is I just took this here, and I did that over here, and I said copy, and then I said new from clipboard. There's a piece. <laughs> and I saved it. And then I went over here. After that, after you save it, I'm not going to save it again because I already have it saved. Then you can move it over and go pick another one. Save it. So if you wanted to make it more difficult, you could make it like smaller pieces. Yeah. I'm just taking the whole picture, not really cropping it, but cutting it into little pieces. And that's why the square is coming out this way. I don't know if you can actually, no, I can't. You can make different size pieces. You could go like this with it if you wanted to. And I just saved the pieces as extra images. So you could take any picture you wanted to and cut it up this way. The only thing, though, is if you have to cut it evenly, you know, measure, measure this piece size and make sure. Otherwise, like my pieces are slightly off in the middle because they overlapped a little bit. But uh, it was meant to be an example. So anyway, that's how you make the puzzle pieces. Um, there's also another editor out there, and I can't remember the name of it, that makes you like allows you to create instead of squares, you can cut like pieces, like which might be more interesting actually. And in fact, I heard uh, one of my students, uh, the previous class, was telling me that um, it'll cut it up for you, make the puzzle pieces out of it for you. So your choice. Can we hold the uh, volume down in the back? It's already kind of loud. Hello? Okay. Or you can take it outside. The hallway is empty. So. I just didn't want to have to yell over you. And we hadn't even started yet. I just started feeling like it was getting loud. All right, so those are, the, those are the jigsaw puzzle pieces. That's the concept of the image. So what we do is we take these images, we load them into a project, and then we create the touch control event, and then we move the pieces around. So you could theoretically count up points for each one of the touches. You could do some sort of a match or something. I don't know. Um, it depends on how much logic you want to put into it. But right now, the jigsaw puzzle game doesn't have any logic. All right, so let's create a brand new project. And this will be a single view application. And I'm going to call mine Puzzle, because I already have one called Jigsaw Puzzle. I'm going to do it for the iPhone. And then press on next and save it. I'm going to put mine on the desktop. So um, I have my jigsaw puzzle. It's my template here. Uh, why do I have a, an error message already? Asset catalog compiler error. 
Interesting. Uh, let me see. One second here. I'm gonna run it to see what's uh, why I have an air. Oh, I don't know. The air okay, the air went away. That's good. Yep, we're doing good. I don't know why I had an error message right off the get go. I did just update my uh, Xcode though. So, all right, let's go back. So now we're going to uh, double click on the XIB file or the storyboard and uh, select a background if we want to change the background color, select and view and bring over the attribute inspector and then uh, drag four image views from the library and place it onto the canvas window. So I'm going to make my background green because I didn't do that in the first one. Well, maybe I'll make it a lighter green color though. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So take uh, input four image views on the canvas. So this is where we're going to initially put our images. So we don't want it to take up the whole canvas. So mm, that one looks pretty good. One. Doesn't really matter what size you make them. So I'm actually going to take this one here and copy it three more times. Two, three, four. So there's a four little images. So we're going to have four, four little pictures here. And the pictures obviously are the pieces. And we're going to put the pieces inside of the image view. Um, so drag four images now of your choice into the project. And that's why I say download the solution project and then you can drag the four solution images and put them into the project and then put them into the image views. And then uh, select one of each of the images to show in each one of the four image views. So in order for me to get the uh, jigsaw puzzle pieces in there, I'm going to actually go to the solution project and drag the four pieces over here and put them into the project. So that's why I labeled them 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, because it's really the order that they're going into. So I'm going to drag them into the project and copy them to three, now I'll make mine, uh, instead of scrambling up the pieces, I'll just put them in order. But you can scramble them in any order. But just put one of the pieces in each one. So this one's going to be image 1A. And I'll go image 1B. 2A. And 2B. So my puzzles, that's not really that fascinating. But uh, you kind of get the understanding. And then in the other solution file, I actually put the big image down here. I'm going to leave it out of this one. But uh, if you wanted to put... Because sometimes, you know, when you put a lot of pieces on there, basically if you made 16, 20 pieces, you have to put 16, 20 image views in there and then drag 16, 20 images in there and stick them in here. And it might be hard to see what the big picture looks like. So you could put the whole image down here, save the whole image before you break it up. And then, uh, or, you know, save it as well as breaking it up, obviously. And then just stick it down here so the user knows what it's supposed to look like. So, uh, so in, es in essence, I'm going to leave that part out. So now make sure that user interaction is enabled on the view by checking the box here. Uh, so we click on the, the image piece and make sure you have user interaction enabled for each one of the pieces. So let's go back and make sure we have that. So I'm going to click on this one here and I see that it's not enabled by default so I'm going to click on this box here where it says interaction, user interaction enabled. So make sure that we can interact with these images. So now that I have uh, user interaction enabled on each one of them, I'm uh, going to be able to uh, pick up the touch control event. So now we're going to open up the viewcontroller.h and create four image variables. Uh, they're going to be IB outlets. Um, I am just going to do this. And uh, well, actually, we can make properties out of them, or we could just do it this way. So copy and paste the four image views to image one, two, three, and four. 
So I'm going to drag this guy over here, click on the tuxedo icon, get rid of the side piece, make sure I'm in view controller.h. And then in between the at interface and the at end, I'm going to paste in my four images. Now I'm kind of doing it this way because it's a kind of showing you another our choice. Instead of making properties out of them, we just made data members out of them. So this works as well. And if I want, I can go here to one, to two, to three, to four. So I've dragged them backwards from the view controller.h. So I wired them to the four images. You can wire them in any order you want. It doesn't really matter because we're not paying attention to the order. If we were, uh, then we could probably use them to keep track of which images were in which position if we wanted to, or what coordinate system, and then, then we could figure out if the user actually got the puzzle correct. So just keep that in mind as probably how one way that you can design the game logic if you choose to add it to your project. We're not going to put it in there, though. So wire each one of them to each one of the connections. We just did that. Now we're going to go into viewcontroller.m, and we're going to make the following changes. We're going to add a method to move the images around. So remember the touch duration and the touch control. This is just a variation on the concept that we did before. So <coughs> we have the uh, four built-in, and we're only going to use two of them actually, touches moves this time. So instead of touches, touch down or touch control, uh, we're moving touches, or, or excuse me, we're implementing an overrided method for touches moves where it's going to pick up the UI touch event for all touches that are going to occur on the canvas and uh, it's going to pick up the location and then which view is in its location, in its surrounding location using the center. So if uh, view touch view is equal to image one, then image one center touch location. So it actually sets the touch location to the center of image one if it's inside of image one. So you'll see when you touch it, it actually kind of rotates it, it actually kind of flickers a little bit because it moves, it'll move slightly when you touch it if you don't touch the center of the piece because it's actually positioning the piece to be at the center of the touch location, which is uh, interesting for dragging. The only reason why it's doing that that way is just for the dragging motion. If it's two, if it's three, if it's four, then uh, move it around, compile, and run the program. It's got to be the simplest program we've built the entire term, but it's probably the more interesting one. Uh, but believe it or not, that, that this is actually the only thing we have to worry about in the entire jigsaw puzzle is controlled by this one little mechanism here. So I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste this in. So if you're interested, you can't figure out how to do your own app for the last app or the fifth app for this course, you can create a pretty elaborate jigsaw puzzle game. <laughs> Very impressive looking. With one method, here's the method here. I'm going to put it right here, actually. Paste. And uh, <coughs> basically, it's using the built-in touches moves. It'll move the touches piece. So in here, if you know which piece is being touched, you could set the order if you wanted to by the position of the pieces. Or you could use some sort of an elaborate counting mechanism if you wanted to, but you don't really have to. You could just run the program now, and it actually works. So I'm going to run the program. And you'll see within seconds how we have a completed jigsaw puzzle. Okay. See how um, when I click on the piece initially, it kind of jerks a little bit? Because it's finding, it's, it's actually positioning its center point. See how, yeah, I can tell now. There you go. Yeah, it kind of jerks a little bit, but my puzzle is uh, complete. See how I messed it up right here, actually. When I was cutting my pieces, I left out this little piece here. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually the kind of, I think that's probably the piece together puzzle, but uh, anyway, you can move it around, shuffle it up. You could do like a shuffle. Pick a random location and move the pieces around. But anyway, I'll let you, uh, I'll let you guys figure that stuff out. This, this is the method here. This is what is doing all of the jigsaw puzzle functionality. All it's doing is it's picking up the touch location automatically for us. So you could actually do some pretty creative stuff with a very few lines of code. So, believe it or not, that's the jigsaw puzzle. Oh, and you're like, oh, I thought this was going to be some hard program. 
Is yours not working? It's working in a different way. <laughs> okay, uh, let me stop this, and uh, I will put the solution in the PDF file all together when I upload this. But let me stop this video because I think we're done with this one. How did you yeah? get the image? Cropping it. Cropping it with a preview. Yeah.